Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. Time to talk a little Navy baseball. Mids get an important sweep to start the Patriot League season this past week as they get by the Bucknell Bison. The big right-hander Noah Song. For From a team standpoint, how big for you and your teammates to get four right out of the box to start this Patriot League season? It's uh, it's awesome. Um, conference play is always very important. Uh, you know, starting off on the right foot is always a big deal, especially uh, you know, non-conference in the very beginning. We were struggling a little bit uh, to start off, but um, you know, at the end of the day, I think we realized that conference play really, really is what matters at the end of the day. So, you know, to uh, you know, be undefeated so far, that's something that we're definitely looking for. All right, big fella, you've been setting the tone here uh, as the top of that rotation. Does the feeling get any different as each year has gone by here for you, knowing that you're the guy in game one trying to, to set that tone right away for your club? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I almost feel like I'm the one trying to trying to keep up uh, with our pitching staff sometimes because they're always. They're always working hard. They're always pushing me every day. You know, um, through the fall, I could tell that we had a lot of arms that were gonna, um, you know, really uh, compete with each other as far as uh, getting getting some innings and getting some roles. So uh, they have kept me pushing in the right direction, and uh, really, I'm just trying to set a good example and set a good pace for them and make sure, uh, you know, they're they're not led astray. So I was gonna say though, is that a good thing to see? And part of the reason why this has been such a consistent 30-win culture here at the Naval Academy. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, uh, I'm a senior, you know, I'm not I'm not going to be around much longer. So uh, really, I want to see these guys, you know, develop into something better than I ever could be. You know, I want to see them uh, make make a change in the program and uh, create a new lasting legacy that, uh, you know, everybody kind of knows who Navy is on the radar uh, as far as the nation, nation goes. So is that important to you and the seniors to, you know, not obviously you want to win every game. We, we know that it's a results oriented business, but at the same time, do you feel a responsibility to keep this culture where it's been and, and even try to improve it each year that, that that you all have been here, especially now that it's your senior year? Yes, yes, that's definitely uh, that's definitely something that we talked about a little bit, and uh, we try to try to do our best, you know, keeping uh, keeping the culture alive, keeping the team in a in a winning standpoint, and everything. But um, you never want to put too much pressure on yourself because at the end of the day, you are going to have different people on the team, um, different talent levels. Um, you know, I think I think we have the talent level, but I think it's just uh, a matter of kind of uh, putting our team together, having the, the the good team chemistry, which I think we've done a pretty good job of having everybody kind of bond together a little bit better this year. So um, overall, yeah, I think uh, it's coming together well. All right, you look back through the years now, you're one of many. We see freshmen on this team already making a, a name for themselves. What is it about this staff as a coaching staff in particular that A, finds good pitching prospects, and then B, cultivates them and coaches them why they're here. I mean, <laughs> it happens all the time with this group, it seems. Yeah, you know, uh, if I had the answer, I guess uh, I guess I would end up being a, a D1 pitching coach one day. But, uh, <laughs> well, you could be at some point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your resume, yeah, your building right now is pretty good. I, I just, I'll, I'll yeah. let you know that. Yeah, but uh, no, you know, all the credit really, uh, as far as on the pitching side, definitely goes to Coach Applegate. Um, you know, he's able to find me, find Luke before me, find everybody, you know, that has helped to... Uh, and really just find people that uh, are really bought into the program, bought into the staff, um, willing to put forth their effort, uh, even when they're not feeling great. Um, and so it's not any one individual that he finds, it's it's everybody that he finds all together. And uh, he, he has helped build a, a staff that has helped uh, to uh, establish a legacy for this program. I was just say for you guys too, with him, how long does it take to find, a, find that bond and more importantly, that trust? Because there's got to be a trust factor with both of you there because you got to both be pulling in the right direction. Absolutely, absolutely. I know, uh, at least on an individual standpoint, uh, my relationship with Coach Applegate has improved drastically throughout the four years. Um, I know that the freshmen coming in, you know, in the fall, they're just trying to, you know, figure out what it is that they need to do, trying to trying to just, you know, run around and just kind of get the job done. But uh, as the spring rolls around, it kind of uh, becomes more of like they, they realize that they're more teammates than they are just – you know, freshmen on the team. You know, everybody is is overall an equal on the team, and uh, we try to we try to treat them out that way. Um, but we also, you know, expect a lot out of them and expect them to keep pushing themselves. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think everybody's done a good job of trying to just fulfill their role, uh, not do too much, um, especially with how young of a staff we have. So, for you, teams have seen you obviously a lot. You've pitched a lot since you got here through the years. Has the game plan changed for you, or have you been able to pretty much stick with what has gotten you uh, here along the way and just said, hey, here's my best, take your shot at it? 
Um, that's something uh, our coach brings up a lot. He says uh, we always want to work to our strengths um, over their weaknesses, meaning, uh, you know, it, I'm a right-handed pitcher, you know, like I'm going to have a, a different, you know, pitch to throw to right-handers than a lefty would. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, uh, <laughs> these guys have seen me quite a bit now. Um, I think last weekend showed that. Uh, they just... Uh, they, they, uh, I think they're starting to take a little bit different approaches. Um, might not be taking as big of swings as, as they have been in the past, just really trying to uh, kind of just chip away at me. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think the biggest thing for me this year has just been trying to develop a full arsenal of pitches, all four pitches, mm -hmm. um, when in the past I've kind of been working off two or three. Um, and I think this year those four pitches have really allowed me to kind of throw to, you know, either side of the plate to any hitter in any count. Um, and it kind of has just widen my game and uh, just overall just kind of uh, give me more options. Is, is it a constant challenge to find the right sequence? And, you know, obviously everybody expects an 0-2 pitch, maybe to be up and away, low and away is a waste pitch, but you may want to come in there and maybe surprise the guy with a fastball yeah. in the inner half or something like that. Is, is that a constant challenge, trying to find that, that sequencing that can serve you best? Yes, absolutely. It's a, it's a constant cat and mouse game with the hitter. Um, you know, you're trying to guess what they're guessing. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, there's multiple pitches that could work in any count, really. Um, it really just depends on the, what you think the hitter's looking for in a certain situation or what you feel best with um, as far as pitches go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and some, some days there will be a pitch that doesn't feel as good for me. You know, if my slider's not working as well, then I might have to go more to change-ups or, you know, curveballs or even back to fastballs. But um, And also, you know, you kind, of, uh, you kind of start to get a feel of, like, the timing of the hitters and their swings and everything like that and you just kind of like uh i guess that's just part of uh being around the game for a while and just kind of having that feel for the game i would say you've been here before does that ball in february and mm. march is it still difficult to get a grip and get a feel <laughs> for sometimes because i i imagine pitching when the weather's in the 30s and <laughs> 40s uh this time of year even for an established pitcher it still can't be an easy thing yeah absolutely uh you know cold weather uh it, it never helps the pitcher per se but um you know, I mean, hitters don't like to hit in it either, uh, for sure. Um, you so, run an inside fastball on me, Hoss. <laughs> if I hit that, it's going to hurt my hands, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, uh, so it definitely cuts both ways. Um, I just try to see it as, as exactly that. I try to think of it as an advantage to myself rather than a disadvantage. Um, I think it's more of a mindset than anything. Um, and, you know, once, once you get going in the game, it's not, you don't really feel cold at all. You know, you, as our coach says, you're the warmest guy in the field when you're a pitcher. You know, you're always moving around, so... Um, yeah, I mean, once the game gets rolling, you never really think about the weather too much. All right, continued success. Best of luck to you and your teammates this weekend against Holy Cross and Army. Thank you. All right, Noah Song joining us here on the Navy Sports Magazine.